my question to you is Come, buddy. Would you want to live this life? Who knows? He's a good boy. Get the tail up in the air, show everybody what we're going to do. No? And right now, there are people out there that are afraid to talk about it. All right. It's scared Come on. Tail up in the air, show me. Show me the good boy. Oh, God. Hello, everybody. Back again. Bit of a layoff from this job. I finally started doing the tail. It's uh, feet. Just to give you an idea. Zoom in close there for you. And uh, there we have it. Can you see that well? It's feet. And much easier to do the back feet than the front feet. A lot more material to work with because I allowed for it. Yeah, see his, his marks. Put a few of those on just practicing. I don't know if you can pick up. So you can adjust. No, it won't adjust. But anyway, we can look at the shape of his tail. If we look at this angle, you can see it's sloping over towards the left hand side of the video. All planned. And a bit of luck. And uh, it hasn't been as hard as what I thought it would be. And I've got a black line now, I don't can see the black line. Virtually that is the line that I have to round it off. I've got to do a bit on the front. There we are. Come and have a look. There's that tail we've got to get done. But first of all, I want to have to machine this up here, and then after that, we'll <coughs> add the other section of the tail. You probably see this hole in there. I'll put that in there. I, uh, because these are round pieces of wood, if I don't relieve the stress by removing that heart, um, it will crack. So hopefully, by putting that hole in. The, grooving it out around there will allow for um, a chance for it to not distress so much and crack well time will tell with this the wood is fairly dry you know um, could be a little bit more and this wood is it's like a like a tea tree I picked up in my father's place there when I trimmed it up there couple of years ago and I let it dry out around the side there which I was going to use for firewood I thought I'd just try it because it's got a nice um, nice grain so I'll go and get my gear on come back and I'll start cleaning this up as you can probably see I've got these holes here before I go just tell you about these little holes here. These are dowel holes, and what I do is I'll drill those through and mate into these holes here. Then I'll run a dowel down into there, so it makes like a fixture <coughs> and uh, uh, creates um, a locking mechanism onto this other piece of wood. So, very hard for it to come undone. No doubt there's going to be little gaps where I've joined them up there, but very minimal. I would say five or six there is what I've got, and that's that's a pretty good effort, really. I think I've sanded them down so it's equivalent to that 
I damaged me me bandsaw when I was trying to cut a piece of wood. I was I lost control of the and I damaged the blade. I'm waiting on some new blades to come in, but I've been doing it by hand. I've been using a handsaw and uh, brought back old times just to make this job work. And it, it and with the handsaw even I got a very nice straight surface. I had to set the blade again, or set the teeth again, and uh, but it's been fun. Well, you know, as fun as you can make it. But uh, I have got a, a drawing that I've been following here. I don't know if you can make out. You probably can do. That's virtually the diagram, roughly, of what his tail looks like, and that's the rear view looking like that so we'll try and get it to slope away then come back and then the little top of his uh, tail will be his, in that way then I'm going to add the add black wood and then I'm going to add the little white tip to it so that's going to be interesting too so hang around I think it's going to be a bit of fun making this tail cheers Okay, I'm going to give it a go with the machine and uh, see what mess I can make. Right. Okay, what I'll do is I'll turn it upside down now, or well, up the right way.
now it's been a bit of rasping get the shape properly Whew. once I get the blank then I can start putting in the uh, grooves for the hair then I'll add the other sections where I've got an idea how thick the wood's got to be <coughs> Everybody, today I'm going to show you what I mean how to pin the sections of wood that I, I am doing on a tail. This method uh, has worked for centuries. They use it on old, bo old boat building um, uh, techniques where they skewed the planks together so they didn't move and they used oak. Well, I'm using oak too. To pin these together so what I do is I do this put two holes here at the moment well, I don't know if I've gone right through no I haven't gone right through in this one but I put it one at an angle like that one at an angle like that then I'm going to do another one on an angle like that and then well, I'll do it on an angle like that so I don't come through this hole here and I'll do another one uh, that way and that way it can't move it can't dislodge can't do anything so that's the best way to pin wood no skill needed just a drill and a right size dowel so we'll drill this They don't have to be on too much of an angle. Okay, maybe I'll turn them around and show you the angle I do put on. Not too much, and try and keep it in there because there's nothing worse than coming across your pins when you come to carve it out. If you go, if like you know, with this tail, some of his fur departs because. Centrally, that's where his backbone, well, for his tail is, and this is just fur. That you, and sometimes the, the fur separates, so sometimes you've got to show that. So it's best to get it over as close as possible. Make sure you get the right. It doesn't have to be a big angle. Just like that, be fine. And one thing you got to remember when you're putting your holes in there that that's your bottom surface. Make sure you know that's your bottom surface. So you see, uh, we've got a, a marigamarole of holes going everywhere and all that, but that's all right, doesn't matter. You don't see that. So you pin. Went a little bit close to the edge, but that's all right. That's all right. We've still got thickness of the wood here, and um, of course you can see that I've taken out the centre. This one was a little bit worse than than the others. There's a little bit of rot in this section, so I took it all out and filled it out. And I know I won't go that thin with the um, the tail at this present moment when I put it up here. I'll just show you. 
So we've got that right. And virtually it sits on there like that. There it is, it's like that. But now all I have to do is I glue it, put the glue on there, and if that's sitting fat, flat, which there is no rock whatsoever on that, okay, I check for gap, no gap whatsoever. So I'm going to have a lot of luck with this. And what I'll do, I'll just glue it now, then I'll come back later and continue those drilling those pinholes and through uh, through the wood, and then I'll put the dowels in there. And I'll, find, I'll cut the dowels just a little bit shorter than the depth of hole. Okay, show a little demo what I'm talking about. Put a little pegs in. There's a little five mil dowels. Put a little bit of oil, um, grease on them. Nice firm fit. Take that one out. You can see it's how far it goes into the corresponding piece of wood. It's on angle. Okay. And I'll show you. Just put that down, I'll go and get a piece of dowel. What the other angle is, so you can get an idea. Okay. Put this one in here. Right. So you can see. Not quite the same angle. So there's got to be a lot of resistance. These ones at the back, they go in like that. This one goes over that angle. So, there's no tidiness about it. The uglier the holes, the better. That's a good description of how you do it. And it'll last forever more, unless you hit it with a sledgehammer. But uh, as I say, you can see I've roughed it out, cleaned it off. Now I'm going to rasp it. The whole idea is I've got to get that white tip on top of here. Just get out of that line. I just put a board up there to stop the light, all the light coming in. We've got to put his white tip up here somewhere, so that's going to be interesting. But first of all, we've got to clean up all this and shape it roughly to shape. Here we are. On the last section of the tail, I'm fretting the point of the tail away. It's easier to fret it out first than come back and rasp it. Just give it through that uh, excess material. The rest of the world, well the northern part of the world is uh, going into, well into autumn now, first day or second day of autumn and um, we're going into our spring and even now you can see the new growth of the new leaves coming out on the, the trees right we've hacked out that now I, I will rasp but I might just cut, cut out a little bit here cut that section out here
Right. Now I'll file that around, blend it all in, honky dory. Little hand file or rasp that I got off the internet. It's a very handy one, it's got rough, smoother, rough flat, smooth flat. Very handy. It's not awkward to hold. Flat the map. I won't take that to a point yet, I'll just rough it out. If it just gets bumped and it breaks off or, or, or flattens, you've got a problem. With a rasp, your teeth will run across straight, really. So if you, and of course there's a little gap in between, from that point there to that point there. You can see that? That point there, that point there. So what tends to happen is you run grooves in, like these grooves here, you can see. And uh, how you get rid of those is you go cross going so you don't go as hard it's like cross hatch Okay, there we have the tail, the wife approves it, and this will be enough for this video. On our next video, I'm going to start doing the grooves in for his, for his fur, lines in his tail, and we'll get that all sorted out first. Maybe a little bit of fine finishing there and all this, but once I'll get up into that situation I'll let you guys um, watch me do the, a little bit of the tail so you can see what I'm doing and then after that I'll uh, fill in the, all these little gaps I'll just go and get the glue
Okay, this one's called Tight Bond. And it's original wood glue. Um, <coughs> it's lilac sawdust. It has been going dark in colour. I'm led to believe that Tight Bond, when you put the uh, sawdust in it, mix it with the sawdust and put it in these cracks and all that, it goes the same colour. So we'll try it out, we'll soon let you know. Okay, see you on the next video. Please subscribe and come along with the ride for this little old doggy. Lots of work to do still. We'll catch you later.